Hi everybody, this is Toby Yunus of Video Tarot LLC and today I'm going to walk you through a tool that I use to help uh, design palettes for uh, color palettes for my websites and sometimes for my YouTube channels. Um, so I'm going to walk you through each side. There's a couple of important things to remember. Uh, number one, the right hand side of this screen is generally informational and the left hand side of this tr screen is uh, where you're going to do all the work. Uh, and all the work's going to uh, consist of working with this uh, palette uh, wheel right here, this color wheel right here. Uh, so the first thing before I get started, I, I wanted to pick a palette. Uh, I, I wanted to pick a color to start to work with and um, the color that I liked happened to be on uh, Join Me, uh, which is a screen sharing site for lack of a better way to describe it. Um, and when I need to pick a color, I always use a tool, a software tool that's free. You can download it. It's called Color Pick. And uh, the way that you grab the color is by uh, indicating which box you want to put it in. And what will happen is uh, as your cursor flows around the screen, you'll see that the color changes along with it. Uh, so what I really liked was this green here. So I'm going to put my cursor over the green and I'm going to do a Control G and that will grab the color and it's uh, the uh, hexadecimal version of the color is uh, right there, the six, uh, six digit hexadecimal version. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to close color pick because I don't need it anymore and I'm going to cho close uh, join me because I don't need it anymore. So um, let's go back here and uh, a lot of these fields uh, that are highlighted, uh, that are in a highlighted color, uh, that are lighter color can be changed. So what I want to do is I want to change the basic color that I'm working with, which is right here. The way that I do that is by clicking there and pasting the color that I just selected. And it comes up with that very nice cream color. Now, um, this is an important thing to remember. The color space that you're working in is what's called the RGB color space. And it's a much bigger color space than web colors. Web, there are only 256 web colors uh, that you can guarantee will turn out correctly on your screen. So if I'm working with a website or a channel page on YouTube, I always, uh, the first thing I always do is I go from uh, to the color space tab, um, menu tab, and I choose web colors versus RGB colors because the RGB color uh, palette is much bigger than the web color palette. Now you're going to see some changes here. A lot of these colors are just going to fall away because um, they're not uh, they're not web safe. Uh, so I'm going to make them web safe, but it's okay because we're going to change things later. Okay, so now I have my uh, web safe colors. And uh, right now uh, what I've done is I've picked up what's referred to as a monochromatic palette. Uh, that means there's it starts with one color and it only works with one color. So you can see over here uh, they're all basically shades of green. Okay. If I wanted to pick a more complex palette, I can move across the top here. And in this case, I can pick a complementary palette. That means uh, the green, uh, a color that complements the green. Um, and I can choose that. And now you can see it adds a very nice, uh, called that a magenta color to it, which is a complementary color. If I wanted three uh, colors, uh, the main color plus two complementaries, then I'd pick the triad and it would give me uh, those uh, three colors, uh, the original one uh, plus. Now, uh, there's a couple of things that I want you to notice. Uh, first of all, the main dot, the dot that represents the color that I'm at right now is here, and I can actually move that around the screen if I want. What I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save this. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to show you by moving the screen you can actually change the palette. Now, you may or may not want to do that, uh, depending on how experimental you are, uh, because sometimes it's hard to get back to where you started. I think that's it, but in case it's not, let's go back and paste the uh, one that I copied. Yeah, it is. So we're good. The other thing that you'll notice is now I have a couple of additional numbers, so I can set the hue. If I can memorize this if I wanted to or write it down by setting the hue at 142 degrees in the angle, and that's the difference between these at 30 degrees. Uh, if I wanted to change those, I can open it up and I can make this, you know, anywhere from 0 to 360, so I can say 90 and OK, and so it moves my main color right over here to 90 degrees. That's going to be 180 there. 270 there and 0 to 360 here actually goes right there. Okay, I can also change the angle. So if I wanted the spread to be a little bit greater here, 
I can change this angle and make it 60 degrees and give myself a nicer spread in the color range. So it, the, 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 what that does is when you start spreading the angle, it gives you a more dramatic look to your colors. So if I need more colors than that, I can go to the next one, which is a tetrad. So it's the main color plus complementaries. And again, you can see I can do the same thing. Let's change this to 90 and uh, you'll see that they're uh, spaced exactly apart on the color wheel. So 90 degrees at zero. So those are the four perfectly complementary colors because we're at uh, zero degrees and spread by uh, spread by 90 degrees. Okay. And all the other thing that I'll point out is your main color down here. That is the red in the center. Uh, it shows the RGB uh, variant of of uh, the red, and uh, the it says RGB, but it's really hexadecimal uh, variant right here. Okay. Uh, a uh, analogic or ana analogous uh, colors are those that are uh, aside one another. And as you can see, the spread is too big. The spread for uh, a side color should be about 45 degrees. So I'm going to change that to 45. And now I have analogous colors. And if you're not good with color palettes, analogous colors are a good place to start uh, because uh, it will um, and uh, and uh, starting with a 45 degrees because basically they give you the three colors that are uh, aside one another. If you want to narrow it down just a little bit, you can change this to 30 degrees. Okay, and that's a that's a pretty workable palette. And again, remember to keep your color space uh, on web colors so that they're um, uh, relatively safe for you. Uh, if you need analogous four colors, uh, then uh, what you can do here is uh, you can. Uh, pick the accented uh, because what they've done is they've given you the analogous colors plus an accent on the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, so now you're dealing with a complete, uh, pretty complete palette there. Uh, it doesn't get much better than that. That should give you all the colors that you need that, uh, to make your uh, website look good. Now, if uh, you can see that the colors on here, there's a couple of things that you can check uh, uh, to see how they turn on your website. Number one, you can click on this button here which says show sample text and it'll add some text to the website in white, gray, and black to see, or I'm sorry, to the color palettes, uh, to the color chips on the color palettes so that you can see uh, what kind of text, uh, what color uh, would be best for that particular background, and you can hide that again. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can show a website page built with a light variant of this uh, scheme, and that's what it would look like and then you can show a dark variant of a website so you'll get an idea of how they all uh, how they all work together and decide whether that's actually what you want to do or not okay one of the important things to remember is that every time you develop a new scheme uh, color scheme designer actually saves it as an HTML page so you can click on this right here and it will take you to that page and you can save that link and that link, and I'm not sure exactly how the uh, company that developed this product does that, but that link is always there. I still have palettes going back uh, three and four years um, that I can still find because I've saved, uh, saved the link. Okay, so let's go back to Color Scheme Designer, and I'm going to show you a couple of other things. Um, if you want to adjust the scheme slightly, uh, there are tabs to do so down here. The Adjust Scheme tab is right here, and you can, by moving... Uh, this button right here on this grid, you can adjust the scheme. Uh, this side is for saturation and brightness, and this side is for contrast. If you're not very good at that, you can go right up to the top and there's some presets, and I'm a big fan of um, high contrast uh, 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 colors, so I'm going to pick that, and you can see what impact it has on your uh, palette. Uh, they're nice and contrasty, and I want to check my dark page example, see what's going to do to my dark page. Oh, that's better. I like those uh, dark, uh, darker colors like that. Um, so, uh, but you have a, a bunch of variants if you've never done this, and th it's actually a good way to learn by by playing with some of these. Uh, this is very dark and saturated, so you're losing some of the colors just because there aren't that many uh, web safe colors. Uh, so we're going to go back to uh, let's see a high contrast uh, which is where uh, I like my colors pretty much the other thing that you can do is if you want to be really brave you can um, adjust each of the variants uh, in the palette uh, so you could select this variant here let's say and you could start uh, 
adjusting it so that you got a little bit more where you liked it. And you can see it's changing it pretty dramatically in some cases. Uh, that's if you get really brave. And you can do that with each one of the colors. So they have the primary, the secondary color A, the secondary color B, and the complementary color, which is the, uh, the green down here. So if you get really brave, you can go to the adjust scheme and start playing with either the, the entire palette at once or uh, the color chips on, on the palette. So it's, um, it's uh, pretty comprehensive. Uh, the final thing that you have avail available to you is the color list. And the reason the color list uh, is important is sooner or later you're going to want to be pulling these colors, copying these colors, these uh, hexadecimal codes uh, into whatever product you're working with so that you can move these colors over uh, to that product. Uh, so the color list is very handy. Uh, let's go across the top and there's a couple of things on the menu that I want to show you uh, just because they're important and they're very uh, useful. Um, random, random will randomize a palette and you can actually change the randomization settings. Now if you're randomizing I'm not sure why you would want to have settings but you do have the ability to change the randomization settings. Okay, to how many, which, uh, which uh, components of this palette do you actually want uh, randomized. Uh, and if you hit it, uh, let me, let me, uh, oh I've already got this saved over here. No I don't. So we're going to save that. Uh, we're going to come back here and we're just I'm just going to pick a couple of randoms and it basically just starts randomizing uh, and it can be uh, uh, you know it, it changes literally everything on it so it, it gets uh, it does get pretty random and I guess the idea is to guarantee you some way of course of making sure that the color palette you selected is not like is unlike any other color palette out there uh, to, a, to a random extent. Uh, the other thing that you'll see here is and again, I'm not sure why the company chose to do this. There must be a very good reason for it. Uh, they added a tab so that you can look at your palette with all the variations of color blindness. Uh, so, uh, for example, these are these are the uh, these are the palette of colors that a person with normal sight would see. But if you knew someone uh, who had one of these variants of color blindness, you could click on that button and. Uh, and while you're seeing the other other colors, this is what they'd see. Uh, so there may be a reason for that in some of the work that you do. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. I've never actually had to use this, but uh, I'm sure there's a good reason for it. And I'm sure that someone can perhaps add a comment to this uh, uh, to this video to explain why uh, you would want to do that in a design world. So uh, let me go back and go back to normal vision. So we were. Here I told you earlier is our color space. You can either go with a full palette of RGB colors uh, or you can do re the reduced palette of web colors. There's 256 of them. And what it basically guarantees is that your colors are going to be, are going to show on everybody's screen exactly the same. Uh, and then they offer some others. The Pantone colors uh, uh, don't seem to be lighted, uh, but if you need opal tone colors, for example, you can convert it to uh, opal tone colors, which again is a uh, a broader spectrum. If you want to export uh, the file that you've created, you can do it in a number of variations including HTML and CSS, uh, CSS, XML, text, uh, the Photoshop palette and the GPL palette, the GIMP palette uh, or GPL and um, you can import those uh, in this case into Photoshop and this one into GIMP so that you have the palette to work with as you're doing your design. Uh, the best one for me has always been HTML, CSS because it produces uh, this page right here um, and it shows me all my colors uh, in the hexadecimal form. Now the big problem that I've always had with this product and let me go back to my color space here so that I'm on web colors and not opal tones uh, that I've always had with this particular product is that it doesn't do the RGB conversion and for example when I use uh, PowerPoint uh, PowerPoint requires the RGB color so what you have to do is you have to take the color and copy it and find a product online that does the conversion. This is one that I use because it's really very convenient. It's at uh, cyclops.com slash tools slash RGB and if I paste that hex string in here a couple of things happen. I'm gonna paste it in there. Um, is, that the, is that the right one? Yeah. Let me go back to my color scheme. So I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna copy it go to RGB to hex. I'm going to do that hex string in there and I'm going to say display. A couple of things are going to happen. Uh, number one, it's going to give me the 
uh, RGB decimal variant of that. So 0, 153, 151. And I can copy those three numbers into my PowerPoint uh, color wheel and it'll give me that color. Uh, the second thing that it does that I thought was, uh, was kind of neat is that it puts the color in the background so you get a sense of what it's going to look like. So uh, that you don't have that in the color scheme designer. Uh, so you'll have to go outside someplace to look for it. Now, you can, if you really want to get funny, you can do a copy. You can go back to Hues. You can put it in there. Like that. And you can say OK. And the RGB is down here, but it's in percentages. So now you have to multiply that times 255 to get the right RGB number. So it's kind of a pain. Uh, the things that you can ignore on the page you can ignore this because it's just some advertising and you can ignore this down here it's just some advertising um, I've donated to this guy a couple of times because I think he deserves it he does a lot of work he does he's not looking for a big uh, donation but it would be worth your while karma wise to maybe give him uh, 10 bucks if you use this tool pretty regularly because it's a if you're a designer it's a very powerful tool uh, I like it a lot so let's go back to complimentary here and pick a better random palette because this one is kinda ugly that one's no better so the randomizer doesn't look at, at, at good at developing palettes as uh, some of the people that I know. Okay, uh, I think that's everything that uh, that's on Color Scheme Designer. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them as comments below this video, and I'll try and get them answered uh, when I have time. Um, but it's a very powerful tool. It's an, it's a very convenient tool because it's free. So uh, thanks a lot. Take care, and um, you know, subscribe.